Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today more like a type of waffle or a philosophy or whatever. So I would like to talk about how computers are actually helpful and used in mathematics and not in the kind of more obvious sense that you do some little calculations, but in the sense of how they're used in proofs. Uh, in other words, there's this really, really amazing, well, story that runs right now that mathematicians try to replace themselves. So who needs mathematicians? So they're trying to, we work very hard to replace ourselves. And that's kind of what I would like to talk about. Um, there will be some, I think, a really cool theorem uh, in the end, but mostly it's about several stages, how computers are helpful uh, in proof. So proof, we'll see what that means. Um, but let's get a little bit started. So historically speaking, well, here's a proof, and I let you guess uh, what 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 is proven here. It's a proof without words, so I shouldn't say anything. Okay, so I let you guess what is proven here. Um, and whatever a proof is, I don't want to go into those details. Of course, there could be a discussion. What is a proof to begin with? Do we count computer proofs as proofs, human proofs as proofs, or whatever, you know? Um, but the point is a little bit that when well, computers came up, so the, the computers are around for quite a while actually, but they really got started in the 1950s-ish. And there was always a deep or really deep connection between mathematicians and computer scientists. At the beginning, they were kind of the same, uh, but eventually it, it kind of splits, but anyway. And so mathematicians were always at the forefront of using computers. And still, it took quite a long time to kind of accept the usage of computers in uh, mathematics in general, um, which is kind of weird because most of mathematics is based on experiment. So if you read the masters or old masters, um, it's always a bit hidden because you just see, see the polished uh, gem and not what is going around in the background. But a lot of them actually have some kind of handwritten notes or whatever. So Gauss or Riemann or so, and they, they really just did calculations as crazy. Uh, like really, really calculations, calculations, whatever calculations means. And with a, a upcoming of the computers, you can just shift calculations to computers. So that was kind of the first step. And that's kind of the what I'm going to talk about first. So stage one is computer assisted proofs. So essentially the usage of computers in proofs. What I said before is like a stage zero, you use computers um, to do calculations. You don't want to multiply a 100 times 100 matrix uh, with itself. It's better to let the computer do it, right? So um, it makes less mistakes. In particular, if you're me, don't try to multiply a two by two matrices. So I can't do that. I will ask a machine to do it. I can barely multiply one by one matrices, but maybe even one by one matrices are beyond me. Anyway, um, so that's kind of stage zero that I'm kind of ignoring a little bit. So computers were used to proofs. As I said, the old masters did that by hand, but eventually, of course, it's much more efficient uh, to use a computer. And as far as I can tell, that was never really questioned. So there was no discussion or anything. People just did it. And that's that's fine. But computer assistant proofs, they took quite a while. And it's not quite clear to me why. To me, it feels like, well, if a computer does a proof, that's way more reliable than an I does do a proof, right? Or, well, anyone else, literally. Um, of course, there could be still mistakes, but any proof has some mistakes somewhere. Anyway, so the first stage, kind of historically, the first stage is that computers were kind of used to do the ugly parts of proofs. You have a horrible integral that you need to solve. You ask a computer to do it. You have a, a, a huge case by case check that you need to do. You ask a computer to do it. Um, and computer algebra systems, actually, whatever, computer, whatever kind of computer algebra system you like, they do exact calculations, right? So you can really use that in your proof. And I did that already. I did that myself already. It's kind of a weird word. I did that myself in the past. And um, yeah, so there was an ugly integral or kind of type of an ugly integral that I don't want to compute. And I just I uh, feed it into one of computer algebra systems and they gave me an exact answer because they do exact calculations. And everyone can verify that perfectly well. So I don't see a problem with that. Uh, most mathematicians nowadays probably won't see a problem with that either. But roughly when this all started in the 70s, 
uh, so the first type of computer assisted proofs, there was a huge discussion. And maybe the first really well known example of a computer assisted proof is what you see here. Uh, it's a four color theorem. So you have a map, like the map of the world, and you want to color it such that uh, adjacent, maybe black is a better color here, um, adjacent countries get different colors. So here, green is adjacent to my country, ocean. So ocean is blue. Uh, so it needs to get a different color. Green is a very nice country. Uh, anyway, so Mexico is uh, adjacent to ocean, so it can't get the color blue and so on. But if you have something that is somewhere stuck uh, here without any ocean, you can get it blue. Anyway, the four color theorem states that you can do this. So adjacent uh, countries get different maps and get different colors uh, with four colors only. And you need at least four colors as this example shows. So if this gets green, let's say this gets black, uh, this gets red. So the middle one needs the fourth color. So you need at least four colors and yeah. So it's an old statement and people tried to prove it for a long time. And eventually in the 70s, there was a proof, a really good one, actually, a very smart argument reducing um, the four color theorem to a large number of cases. And then the cases were checked by a computer. And there was a huge discussion. Nowadays, probably most people won't question that anymore. But anyway, so that's kind of my stage one. So you have, like in the four color theorem, a large case by case check. And you can't do that by hand or you don't want to do that by hand. Depends a bit. Um, and you just ask a computer to do it. That's computer assistant proofs. And that's, as I said, got roughly started in the 70s and is by now kind of very well accepted. And literally everyone does it in some sense. Um, anyway, the, the next step, stage two, that got started also around the same time. We will, we will get a table uh, in on the next page, but it's way slower in progressing. And that's computer verified proofs. And I think that's absolutely fabulous. So instead of doing a proof by hand and you kind of read the argument and kind of convince yourself that it's okay, which is always very questionable. So I convinced myself like a million of times that an argument is okay, but actually the argument was completely wrong. So that can happen. So it's way better to have computer verified proof. A computer that, uh, uh, a computer that uh, proof that a computer can, has actually verified. So you make it machine readable. Um, the machine checks the logic steps and says, oh, good, or says, oh, maybe not so good. So computer verified proofs. And, this is pretty cool. So they have, you have some very, very uh, important theorems, the Jordan curve theorem, or its incarnation here. So I call this a Jordan curve theorem because it's actually equivalent to the Jordan curve theorem is a statement that K3, which is a graph here in the background, cannot be, is not planar, cannot be embedded in the plane. But anyway, the Jordan curve theorem, very exciting. It's, it's a very topological proof. You wouldn't guess that this can be verified by computer, but it can. Um, one of the more early examples would be quadratic reciprocity, kind of one of the main theorems ever with like a million of different proofs by a million of different people has been computer verified. And I give you now a list, um, a quite of old fashioned list, but uh, so you will see what I mean. Uh, so I got this list from a paper from 2008. So there has been progress. There has been a lot of progress. I apologize. This is the most uh, most accurate list, uh, or most up-to-date list I found. So I'm kind of really old-fashioned. Anyway, so it roughly started around the same time, as I said, so a little bit later. So stage one was in the 70s. Stage two is maybe in the 80s. And the first things you see are kind of statements where you kind of believe that they're easy to feed in a computer. So incompleteness theorem like Gödel, yeah, sure. That's something that is kind of very machine readable. Um, and then quadratic reciprocity is also not so difficult. But there are also some really, really exciting things like the Jordan curve theorem, which doesn't look like you can really fit it on a computer or the Brow fixed point theorem. And here's also our little four color theorem. So for the four color theorem has not just a computer assistant proof, but it also has a computer verified proof. So I think the four color theorem is in a very good shape. Um, anyway, and then I have some, some, I mean, this is really, really a great one. The prime number theorem uh, is computer verified. And here's something like the, the formal statement of the 
Jordan proof theorem. So kind of the problem with computer verified proofs is that they need to be machine readable, right? So you want to fit it in the computer. That doesn't necessarily mean they are readable by humans. And um, so the Jordan curve theorem, I haven't said actually what it is. So Jordan curve theorem essentially says that if you draw a curve, a nice simple curve, then there will be an exterior and there will be an interior and draw it in the plane. Okay, that's a statement that everyone can understand easily. Uh, it's computer form looks a bit weird, but that's the whole point kind of, it. The, the computer doesn't care. The computer can't understand or it's hard for a computer to understand this way. Uh, the computer likes this one way more. And kind of so the whole problem is in this computer verification, well, there are lots of problems, but the main problem, the key step is to make proofs or statements machine readable, so computer readable. And that's not obvious how to do it for a Jordan curve theorem or for a, a Brouwer fixed point theorem. It's maybe more obvious how to do it for first for an incompleteness theorem. I agree. But anyway, I think this is really exciting. So we can now be essentially as sure as we can be that the theorems are actually true, which is great. And by now, as, as you can see, this is from 2008. So I'm like 15 years late if you watch this video in 2023. But uh, anyway, so it's just there has been so much progress. And this field is, is just really, really absolutely great and, and growing. And people try to get more and more proofs into computer verified form which I think is absolutely fabulous. And that's why it's, well, it's one of my favorite proofs, although it's more like a, a meta theorem or something. Um, so here's a, a very, very nice list. And it's just, I think that's just, just really, really exciting. But there's an even more exciting direction. There are two more ex exciting directions. Um, I will shift the other one to an, a later video and we only discuss one of them, which I call stage three. And that's who needs mathematicians. So if a computer can verify a proof, then a computer can come up with conjectures and verify those conjectures without any human around. And that's really fabulous. Um, the state of the art is not as great as it could be. So this is still kind of work in progress, but there are some um, really great examples. So there was a conjecture in, let's be, let me say in formal algebra or logic, which is called the Robbins conjecture. And people tried to prove that conjecture by hand for a long time. And eventually, um, so there was no known proof. It's very different from like, well, okay, we already have proof of the Jordan curve theorem, but now it's computer verified. No, there was no known proof of that conjecture. And people fit it in the machine and the machine uh, cooked up a proof itself, which is absolutely amazing. So the machine was able to, to prove this conjecture. The conjecture itself is not very exciting. Uh, it's kind of the first step. It's a little bit like this. Like the first steps are always like, maybe not super exciting theorems. And I just called the incompleteness theorem not very super exciting. Note that. Um, anyway, so this is not a super exciting conjecture, but anyway, the computer cooked up the proof itself. And as soon as you have the proof written down, it's actually not so bad. There are only a few very, very short number of steps involved, but they're kind of very strange manipulation of symbols, which no human could have, could have come up before. And the computer did it. And that's, I think, hopefully we'll see what the future brings, but that might be the future of mathematics itself. So uh, in another video, I will talk about how computer can come up with conjectures or help to come up with conjectures. So that's the first step and come up with conjectures is the second step. And they can come up with proof for those conjectures, which is absolutely great. So automated proofs is mostly open right now, but it, it's it's progressing. And I think that's absolutely, absolutely fabulous. And I say that knowing that it probably will destroy my job. Uh, but anyway, that's not the point we advance as a species, so it doesn't matter whether I sink or swim. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.